Hello viewers, welcome back. So in the previous video, we saw the basics of what exactly is password cracking, what are its various types and how to implement password cracking with the help of a tool called John the Ripper. In this video, we are going to learn about what is a rainbow table attack, what exactly is a rainbow table, how it is used to crack passwords, what are its advantages over the brute force attacks and how fast it is as compared to the brute force attack. So before going into the practicalities, let us discuss what exactly is a rainbow attack. Over here, we are having few questions. Let us answer those questions first and then we can move towards doing the practical experiment. What is a rainbow table? How does the rainbow table attack work? How to create a table? How to crack a password? And what are the advantages slash disadvantages? So first of all, what is a rainbow table? As we all know, the passwords in a computer system are not stored directly as plain text, but they are hashed using some kind of an encryption algorithm. A hash function is a one way function, that is, it cannot be decrypted. Whenever a user enters a password, it is converted into a hash value and it is compared with the already stored hash values. If there is a match occurring, then the user is authenticated. It's as simple as that. A rainbow table is a database that is used to gain authentication by cracking the password hash. It is a pre-computed dictionary of plain text passwords and their corresponding hash values that can be used to find out what plain text password produces a particular hash. So in simple terms, since more than one text can produce the same hash, it is not important to know what the original password really was as long as it produces the same hash. That is as simple as that. So a rainbow table produces much faster results as compared to brute force. Why? Because a rainbow table is a pre-computed table for caching the output of cryptographic hash functions. As we all know, cache memories really work faster as compared to the secondary memory. And hence, we can say that a rainbow table is much faster as compared to brute force attacks. Why? Because in this case, you are not required to go line by line you have an entire table at your disposal and the result can be computed really very fast as compared to brute force attacks. So let's get back to our second question. How does the rainbow table attack work? Well, a rainbow table works by doing a crypt analysis very quickly and effectively. This is what we have just now seen, how it does so. Unlike brute force attacks, which works by calculating the hash function of every string present with them, calculating the hash values and then it compares it with the one present in the computer at every step it takes a long time hence a rainbow table attack eliminates this need by already computing the hashes in one single shot and as a result it produces the output very quickly as compared to what brute force does well how to create a table then it's very simple what we do is a hash of a string is taken and we further reduce it to create a new string and this new string is again hashed with the same algorithm. Let me show you an example. For example, this is a string. We are performing a hash, MD5 hash of this string and we got the answer as this. Now we take the first 8 bytes of this string and again we do the same hash of the first 8 bytes and as a result we got this hash and this process will keep on continuing until we reach the end of the chain. That is what we call as the concept of a chain in rainbow tables. Now I will explain what is a chain while we perform the practical experiment. At this moment just assume that this process keeps on continuing until we reach the end or until a desired uh, chain is reached. Fine. This is how we create a table. Now, how is this table used to crack a password? Well, it is again very simple. We have completed creating a table. Now, how can we use this table to crack a password? It's again very simple. What it does is, it starts off with the hashed text, that is the password. It is then checked whether it exists in the database. If so, we go to the start of the chain and start hashing until there is a match. It's very simple. Let me repeat it once again. We start off with the hashed text that is the hash of the password and check whether any result exists in the database. 
if there is a match in the database, we go till the root of that particular match. If there is a match present, then we go till the root of that chain and we try to find out what is the very first value which was hashed. And this is our password. I hope this is clear. So that is how a rainbow table is used to crack the passwords. Now, what can be the advantages and disadvantages of these tables? Uh, well, the advantages are quite evident. Unlike brute force, which use up a lot of time in going through all the hashes one by one, in the case of rainbow table, the values, the hashes are already computed and we simply need to do some searching and then the answers are in front of us. Very fast as compared to, it's very fast as compared to what brute force attack is. Well, what could be the disadvantage? A disadvantage could be it uses up a lot of space. That is one of the disadvantages. It uses up a lot of space in terms of uh, hundreds of GBs and that is the main reason it is one of the drawbacks of a rainbow table. Well, this is all about the theory. So now let's get going with the practical aspect of how to implement a rainbow table. The very first thing that we need to do is uh, log into your Kali machine and open up a terminal and start installing Rainbow Crack, which is our software that is sudo apt get install rainbow crack. You are going to make use of this software. Enter the password for Kali and let's move ahead. Next step, what we need to do is just enter RT Gen and check if it works out or not. If there is no error, we can move ahead. Well, this is the syntax of RTGen. RTGen followed by the hash value, hash algorithm, uh, then what sort of a rainbow table you want to create, and then the plain text length, the minimum plain text length, and then the table index, the chain number, part index, etc. So over here, as we can see, 7 stands for the plain text length, table index is starting from 0, the chain length is 1000. And the chain number part index is again 1000. So we are doing the operations of hashing 1000 times as we had already discussed what is the chain. So this process will end at the 1000th chain. So this is what is the syntax of RTGen. Now let's implement RTGen followed by MD5 which is the algorithm, hashing algorithm that we are choosing. Then lower alpha numeric. Well lower alpha numeric is nothing but this is how I want my rainbow table to look like. It will consist of all the lowercase letters, alphabets and numbers from 0 to 9. Followed by 1, 3 is the length of the password, then 0, then chain 1000 and again chain ends on 1000 and so on. So as you can see, this is how my rainbow table is generated. Now I am going to show you how to make use of this rainbow table and crack our password. The rainbow table is present in file systems. Uh, go to the folder user and Inside that folder user, go to one more folder called share. Inside the share folder, look for a folder called rainbow crack. There will be a separate folder for rainbow crack. And once you are inside rainbow crack, you will be able to see all those rainbow tables that you have created. I was already having one rainbow table. So the names are quite confusing because both are MD5. So let's check where is lower alpha numeric. That is what I have created just now. So this is not the one, the one which is on the right hand side should be the one which I'm looking for. As you can see, the name is lower alpha numeric because that is what the filter I have applied while creating this rainbow table. So as a result, you can see that the rainbow table is present inside this folder and this is uh, what I'm going to use to crack my password. So as we know the password of length three, it's what I have selected. So I will first of all try to uh, create a, a password of three characters length and then I will try to break it. So let me write my name in short, the first three characters of my name and let me choose the method of hashing as MD5. This is the hash value which is created. So let me copy this and we are going to need this later on. Now let's sort the particular rainbow table that I have created. It will basically speed up the process of comparing. Uh, I guess I need to write sudo, yes, and that will do the trick. 
and this is uh, and these are the sorted rainbow tables the two tables which i already have in this particular folder both of the tables will be sorted together next step i need to apply uh, r crack using this i am going to crack the actual password so sudo r crack space dot dot signifies the entire folder space minus h for the hash and now i need to paste the hash which i had uh, generated earlier let me copy it once again and paste it over here now once i press enter the uh, the password cracking process will begin and it will hardly take up one or two seconds or even quicker than that let me see it press enter and as you see it it didn't even take a second it took almost 0.05 second half of a second to complete the entire process and this is how we got to know the password which is sri so isn't it cool it is really very simple but again it depends upon the length of the password the complexity of the password and the amount of characters you have used in between it it could be a mix of alphabets numbers special characters so that is why it is always recommended that you use a password of at least eight character length because as the length of the password keeps on increasing the time taken to crack it also exponentially increases so this is how the rainbow tables are used to crack a password and get access to any particular system or file or any device so thanks a lot for watching this video stay tuned for the next set of videos uh, which will actually begin with web attacks and information gathering we're going to learn about some tools such as who is lookup ns lookup netcraft denial of service attacks sql injection attacks and phishing attacks so stay tuned for the upcoming set of videos